Hey guys, what's going on? Dizzy Bike here. Sorry I've been off for a while, but now I'm going to give you a review, or a quick review, of the 2014 Honda CB650F. I believe there's two models of this bike, or I think it's two models or three models. You can get a third version. I think there might be an adventure, ver adventure version. I'm not really sure. But it's a very, very good looking bike. This one's got ABS. It says there. Uh, and it flashes on the dash. Nice stainless steel downpipes. I really like these pipes on this bike. Don't like the exhaust or the giant cat that's on the exhaust. I don't think that looks very nice at all. This bike is completely standard. Went up to have some stuff done to mine, get a service and things, and thought I'd take this out. It's a very nice looking bike. I do like the colour on it. It's like a matte black sort of hard to explain it revs to 11,000 you've got hazards full beam horn in a very horrible place I don't like where the horn is at all because that's normally where you'd have indicators the indicators are below the horn whereas people who ride bikes know that it should be the other way around <laughs> kill switch this side and starter hasn't got a shift interlock you don't need to hold in the clutch I don't really like the indicators on this bike of where they're placed but you have got a very nice headlight and side lights I like these two side lights here I'm not very good at giving reviews so you have to give me a break you've got an LED tail light once again if you were going to buy this I'd recommend a tail tidy this it just doesn't look that nice I don't think you'd have to get one of a hugger as well they just it looks so much better All right. when you get on the bike you realize how light the bike actually is it's all very low down you can't feel any of it I'm six foot one ish I've got my feet flat on the ground and my knees bent so I think if you were 5'10", 5'11", it'd be alright, any lower than that you might want to start thinking about different bikes or having the bike lowered anyway, keys in the ignition, it's got a Honda Hiss as standard spin it, all you, does all its calibrations you've got fuel on this side time uh, your little warning lights, it's got ABS ABS is just down there, I don't know if you can see that miles per hour, which I believe you can change to kilometres as well push the button start straight away for those who want to know what the exhaust sounds like it's not very loud at all the bike itself I believe is around 80 horsepower correct me if I'm wrong but go for a bit of a ride. It's a very smooth gearbox on it, as you'd expect from most bikes these days. It hasn't got a lot of low down power. You kind of have to rev it to actually get things going on. Right, we're accelerating into a 40. Let's see what it's like pulling off. in first gear at about 7,000 revs so it does move it has got power to it, it is an inline four it's just the throttle itself is kind of a bit jerky for me I, and my a bit twitchy if you get what I mean I think it's ride by wire and ride by wire on fuel injection bikes doesn't really go well the brakes on this are very sharp, as you'd expect. The ABS works well. I was on some gravel earlier and I didn't realise it. And I was testing the back brake and it tried to, it acted like it was going to lock if it didn't have the ABS, if you know what I mean. I'm going to accelerate from 40 to 70, see how it does. nicely. So at 70 miles per hour it cruises at about 5,000 revs and 5,000 out of 11,000. The red line is actually at 13,000 when the bike will start like bouncing off its limiter. 
but it cruises quite nicely. You need wind protection on this bike, it's going to need a fly screen or something, but that might be because I'm used to a, a fully fair sports bike, so, or well, sports tourer. But really nice and comfy sitting up here. The seat is very, very comfortable. Obviously, I'm not leaning on my arms or anything like that, I'm not leaning over, which is strange for me. I am. My CBR, I lean over all the time. But you can't feel anything on your arms, it doesn't seem strain at all. It's a very nice, comfortable bike. We're going to look at some other features on the bike in a second when I find something to put over. Like if you were, if you bought the bike, how easy would it be to live with? Like when you're doing your tire pressures or things like that. Because I mean, on my CBR, the the discs are quite big. The front, you just can't get to the bit to do your tire pressures very easily. And same goes from the back of the bike. Brakes on this bike are very good. I don't know about wheelie power in first gear, it doesn't feel like it could do a power wheelie, but I mean you could clutch it up if you really wanted to. It's not the sort of thing I do, but you could quite easily clutch up a wheelie. All right, we're pulling here. There's one strange thing I find about this bike. All right, here's the clutch, see if you can see it properly. The biting point is normally about here on my CBR. It's almost fully extendable on this clutch before it actually pulls itself out. It will put itself on idle, for those who wanted to know that. Yeah, so you might have the same problem on this bike. Oh, no, because the discs are quite big, but I don't know if you can see that in there is where you do your tire pressures. Fill up there. On the back. Um, yeah, same sort of problem. You're not, it's going to be quite difficult. It's going to be quite a uh, sort of fiddly job to do it. Sorry I'm not that good at reviews and sorry if I sound a bit weird. I have actually got, well just come off a cold and I've hurt my throat and stuff from coughing so much. But I think this is a, this is one down, four up, so it's five speed gearbox. I'm pretty sure it is anyway. At 40 miles per hour. It cruises just under 3,000 revs, so it's a very economical bike. The gearing on it is is perfectly set, I think. I think it could do with a six-speed, so it's a bit quicker. I don't know what the max speed is. I'm not going to be doing anything like that. I'm not that sort of rider. <laughs> but um, all the clock and things, it's very easy to read. I can literally just glance down. I can see that I'm doing 41 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour dropping. I can see it's 11.47 a.m. I can see how much fuel I've got left. It's only got a bar. And the total mileage on this bike is 777 miles. Like 770 miles. So it's still being broken in. And it smells like it's being broken in as well. It smells like a new engine. It just it doesn't make any sound on this bike. I think if you're going to buy one, you'd have to get an aftermarket pipe for it. Full system as well. Even though I do like the stainless steel bits at the top front, but it's got a hinged fuel cap for those who. It's not one of the ones you stick the key in, twist it, take the whole thing out. It just hinges itself up. I know it may seem like a weird thing to have in a video, but there's been a lot of bikes I've had, 600s and things like that, that haven't had one of those. It's a strange thing, but I wanted a bike with that. <laughs> Once you get above about 6,000 RPM, it starts to pull really quickly. It keep up with most 600s. I mean, it all depends on what sort of rider you are. But it's very jolty. I mean, I'm on a bit of a bumpy road at the moment. I can't really feel it on the bike, but if there's a bump that makes me lean forward or anything like that, the bike on the throttle is quite jolty. 
but we can take the bike back now. Hopefully get out another one if I can. But I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my probably very bad review of this bike. I hope it helped in some way if you were going to buy this bike. You know, ride safe guys.